Hello everybody and welcome to lesson 13 steps in data collection. Previously, as you remember, we have discussed about the characteristics of good sample design. Once we assure that our sample design is proper and good, so the next step is to collect the data. So before collecting the data, we have to know the steps or the procedures that we are using in data collection. The content covered in this particular lesson is data collection procedure or the steps in data collection. Before moving to uh, the main discussion that is data collection, uh, let's define what data means. Data refers to the information or facts collected, observed or generated during uh, scientific investigation or study. So researcher uses those data to describe and explain phenomena that exist in the real world or we can say the business world. Those collected data pass through different steps that is analyzed, interpreted and becomes information that helps the decision maker to make informed decision. So data collection is a critical process because because once the data is collected, by the way, it will be costly to do it again. We cannot repeat it again because it is very costly. We incur a lot of cost, time and effort. And the other reason is that sometimes it is impossible to collect the data again, the same data again, because the nature of the environment or the circumstances may vary because of the dynamic natures of the environment. So we cannot get the same data with different period of time. So data collection requires considerable knowledge and skills. We have to conduct data collection properly to make informed decision. Otherwise, it leads us to make poor decisions. To ensure our data collection is proper, we have to follow the data collection procedure or the steps. Data collection procedure is a systematic approach used to collect data for research analysis or decision making purpose, or it is essential to ensure that data is collected accurately, consistently, and in a reliable manner to produce meaningful and valid results. This is the main thing, by the way. We have to follow data collection process or data collection steps to assure that our collected data is accurate, consistent, and reliable so as to make informed decision. So because of the above reason, we have to know, we have to understand data collection procedure and we have to apply this procedure so as to uh, collect our data. So the first step in data collection uh, procedure is define the research question or objective. We have to know, we have to uh, properly define the research objectives. Once we define the research objective and the next step is we have to identify the data variables or the most important variables that we have to collect the data. And the third step is choose the data collection methods. Once we identify the data variables, once we know the data variables, the next step is we have to select the appropriate data collection method. And the fourth step is design data collection instruments for the suitable for or which is suitable for the data collection method. And then we have to conduct pilot test. We have to conduct pilot test so as to uh, make sure that uh, the required reliability and validity is uh, fulfilled. And then we have to train the data collectors. In case if there are many data collectors, so we have to give, we have to provide proper training so as to collect the data properly or so as to collect the data in a proper way. And the next step is obtain informed consent with the respondents. We have to just clearly tell the respondents about the objective of our uh, data collection and we have to get their consensus. And the last one is we have to just collect the data. Anyway, let's uh, discuss each of the steps in the upcoming uh, slides.
So the first step is define research question or objective. So here we have to clearly articulate the purpose of data collection. That is, the purpose of data collection is just to achieve our objectives or to answer the research questions. What specific information do, do you need to gather or what are the, your research objectives or goals? We have to clearly define our research objectives so that we can understand what data can answer, what data can achieve our objectives. Let us look one example. Uh, for example, uh, we can take a research question. What are the preferred features and brands of smartphones among consumers aged from 18 to 35? So in this case, in this case, we, we are looking once we know the research question so we can understand what data can be obtained, what data can be uh, collected. So the data that is very important for this is just among the respondents of from 18 to 35 years. So we just uh, make them to tell us, we just make the respondents to tell us their preferred features and uh, brands of the smartphone. So we are clearly aware about our uh, objectives so we can uh, easily understand what data are important to achieve our objectives. And the other example is what's the effect of service quality on customer satisfaction. Here, as you see here, our objective is just to find out the effect of service quality and the customer satisfaction. So we can just take a data about service quality and customer satisfaction. So we can answer our research question easily. Coming to the second step that is identify the data variables. So here we determine the data variables you need to collect. We need to collect to address our research questions. Or these variables should be measurable and relevant to our objectives. Once we define our objective, the next step is we have to take or we have to uh, find out the data variables that can achieve or that can answer our research objectives. Let us take one example. Uh, look here. It is a continuation or it is an extension of the first example. So the smartphone features here, smartphone features is one variable. The smartphone brands is another variable. By the way, you pr previously uh, we uh, remember the uh, previous examples that is what is the uh, preferred or what is the preferred features and uh, brands of a smartphone within the age from 18 to 35 so having that question in mind from that question we can draw out the important variables that is the smartphone features one for example the camera quality the battery life the screen size maybe the resolution and so on the speed we can say the capacity these are the uh, some of the examples of smartphone features and the other is a smartphone brands the choice based on their age gender income level uh, usage pattern and so on so these are the uh, important the two important variables from the first research question and from the second research question what is the effect of service quality on the customer satisfaction so service quality dimensions and customer satisfaction are the two important variables that's, that must be considered in uh, the uh, research or in the data collection. Coming to the data collection methods, that is select the, or choose the data collection methods, we have to select the most suitable or appropriate methods based on the research objectives and the availability of resources. The main category of uh, data collections are the primary and the secondary. By primary, we mean that the data is fresh and first-hand data that's collected for the first time and it can be collected through survey in interview observation experiment questionnaire and focus group discussion and secondary data collections are those data that is already used for the other purpose and it exists in some data sources for example the government uh, the government report databases academic publication and so on anyway here here we have to first assure that if we do have secondary data already available, so it is better 
to use secondary data if it is recent, if it is reliable, and if it is relevant for our research. Because, because by the way, it saves a lot of resources. If not, if we if we cannot get uh, a secondary data which is reliable, which can uh, fulfill our objective, which is which is not relevant or which is too old, so we can go for the primary data collection. Anyway, let us to look at the examples. If our objective is just to e explore something new or getting new insights, we have to use primary data collection because on new things or on brand new things, there is no, probably there is no data. So we have to use primary data collection that is particularly interview and focus group and discussion. And if our objective is to assess the time effect or the dynamic effect or the trends of uh, maybe the sales, so we can use secondary data uh, collections. And the next step is uh, design the data collection instruments. So once we know, once we determine the data collection method, the next step is we have to prepare, we have to either take some standard measures from other publications or we have to develop our own instruments. So for surveys, questionnaire or interview guides, we have to create a well-structured or clear set of questions that is to be asked for the respondents. And the other is we have to ensure that the instrument is ambiased and will capture the necessary information the validity and the reliability of those instruments need to be checked properly before collecting our data. So let's take an example to better understand. Uh, for example, for survey questions, please rank the following smartphone features in order of importance. We can ask such type of questions. So we just list those features that is camera quality, battery life, and screen size. So the respondents may rank the, those features according to their importance for the respondents. On the scale for, from one to five, how satisfied you are uh, with this brand of smartphone? So a respondents can just answer this question. So very dissatisfied, satisfied, uh, neutral maybe, very satisfied and satisfied. So uh, a respondent can choose from one to five scale about the satisfaction level. And the next is pilot test. Once we develop the instrument, once we develop the instrument before implementing the data collection procedure, before implementing the full scale data collection at large scale, so we have to conduct pilot tests with a small group of sample to identify and address any issue with the data collection instrument or procedure. By the way, pilot test is a very important to correct our mistakes, to correct errors, so as to enhance the validity and the reliability of our questioners. For example, conduct a survey with a small group ranging from 30 to 40. So once we just take those data, we can just observe the questioners that is responded from the respondents or the, uh, res the response of the respondents. And we can just calculate the reliability, whether it is uh, it satisfied the reliability or required reliability range or not. And even we can just understand whether the respondents understand our question or not. So we can examine, uh, we can enhance our questioner uh, quality so as to understand by the uh, respondents. And the other step is, the next step is train the data collectors. Because data collection, we already said that data collection requires knowledge and skills because it is critical, by the way, it is very important, it is very essential tasks. So for those data collectors, we have to provide proper training. 
if multiple individuals are involved in data collection, we have to ensure that they are properly trained on data collection instruments, procedures, and even ethical considerations. When they conduct a research, they have to obey the ethical consideration. Actually, you have to refer back on the previous uh, discussions. There is ethical considerations in research. For example, train the survey administrator on how to conduct the survey, explain its purpose to the participants. They have to explain the purpose of, to the participants and they have to address any potential questions, by the way. That is, pro, that is asked from the respondents. And they have to respect the respondents. They have to keep the privacy and they have to get the consent from the respondents before, uh, before conducting or before taking the data. Uh, anyway, they have, prop, they have to uh, manage properly the data collection. And the other step is obtain informed consent. If your data collection involves human subjects, that means if we just collect the data from the uh, respondents or from human beings, we have to ensure that we have to get a consent from each participant and adhere to ethical guidelines and regulations. If, an, you know, if the respondents are not willing to uh, respond, if the respondents are not willing to give uh, a data so it is it is possible just to interrupt at any steps of, of the data collection pro process so we have to ask their permission whether uh, they can whether they can give the data or not so we have to provide a consent form to participants explain the purpose of the survey data handling and their rights to withdraw at any steps. Particularly, usually, usually the cover page of any questionnaire is it is a consent form which informs which informs the respondents the objective or the purpose of the data collection and about the privacy issue. So this is the last step of uh, data collection procedure that is data collections. So we have to obey or we have to respect all the steps in data collection so as to get accurate and reliable data. Otherwise, if we miss those steps, we might not get proper or accurate data. That makes us to conduct poor decisions. So we have to give great attention for our data collection by respecting all those uh, procedures. This is the end of our discussion. Thank you for listening. If you have any comment or question, please write on the comment box. Bye.